Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea. Yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! I pull a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! The following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and joining me once again is my good brother, Phil from the Bullet Cats. How's it going, Philip? Huey, it's, it's, no, it's not Thursday, Jesus. <laughs> it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Um, I've left my, my place of employment. I've never been actually happier you know, I, I, I went out, not on my back. I didn't look up at the lights. No, no. I went over, brother. Three <laughs> three years in the territory, and I went out on top, as I should. Give me a hell yeah. Hell oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Well, congrats. I know I saw your post earlier on Instagram making a big announcement, so I'm sure that's a big weight off your back now and a big sigh of relief, I'm guessing. Oh uh, yeah, man, it really is. You know, it really like I we, we live in a world where people really struggle with mental health and hey man, that job it was it was getting to me. It was, it was becoming like physically draining. I started stress eating and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, I'm already a hefty boy. I'm becoming an even heftier boy." Yeah. I was like, "Oh no, we need to stop." So, today was my last day. You know, there there are customers I am going to miss. Mm-hmm. Uh there are coworkers I I am going to miss, but uh, you know, it was time to move on and do what's best for me. Uh, you'll see me pop up in AW or NXT pretty soon. <laughs> you gotta defend. Uh, I'm a, I'm a show. I'm a show up on AEW and and tell my my employer to take that brass ring and shove it. I was gonna say, oh, you should go to AEW and defend the Bullet Cast Championship. But then again, wait, oh, you don't have it right now. <laughs> hey, hell, hey, hey, hey! Why you what? Why, why are you going to throw shade, Hubert? Dude, why are you I, do that? I, I'm going full heel now. I'm going to be a heel Bullet Cast champion. I'm going to go full heel and just rub it in people's faces. I'm the best, not you. Get away from me. Or maybe I should go full Roman and just get like uh, uh, someone to speak on my behalf. I need a Paul Heyman to talk for me. My special I'm right, advisor. I'm, I'm, right, I'm right here, man. I'll, I'll be the executive council. The executive council. Then, okay. I well, I, I'm not a tribal oh, chief. I can't be that. I'm not Samoan descent, but I do live on an island, Alameda, here in the Bay Area. For all the clicks out there who don't know, it is an island. So it's, uh, uh, I guess I'm a an island the, chief. You're, you're the island giant. There we go. <laughs> I like that. There, there we go. <laughs> okay, all right. We, <laughs> we'll get to the creative wheels going. We can think of some more stuff, but, uh, but yeah. No. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us on this week's episode of In the Click. As always, please remember to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, also YouTube. I'm doing my best to catch up and get some more fresh new content up on our YouTube channel. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at In the click i was i was watching so what i do now when i'm trying to catch up on episodes of wrestling this week you know the weekly shows i I try my best to do social media in the meantime to keep to stay busy so today i'm watching smackdown and i'm posting a lot of stuff so i was posting a lot of photos up on our instagram page so please check it out i'm trying to do my best to represent and cover all the promotions that's something I realize, like, sometimes I get so focused on WWE or NXT or AEW, but then I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot the other promotions out there, like Ring of Honor, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, also NWA by way of the United Wrestling Network and their joint new new uh, show that's happening, Primetime Live, that's starting this Tuesday on Fight TV. So uh, I'm thinking about uh, purchasing that bundle for the four weeks and watch the first four episodes of that. 
That's a possibility, dude. And I want to say shout out to Ring of Honor for bringing back the pure championship. You know, yeah. that, that was a title that Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson dominated with in his early uh, days in Ring of Honor. And it was really kind of like the, um, the the hybrid, the workhorse title, kind of like an IC championship. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I've seen the tournament. I've seen the lineup. we got stellar guys like Jonathan Grisham mm-hmm. in there that I'm really, really excited to see. And then Warrior Wrestling, they're putting on a show. And you have uh, TJP, who I interviewed this past week. Go check that out. He's going up against Alex Shelley of the Motor City Machine Guns and a little um, a couple matches they have going on there in their little uh, football field stadium show. So a lot of good wrestling is going to be happening as play- places start to figure out how to do this in the pandemic era. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up and just made me realize, can't forget, MLW, they just announced the restart. So they're going to be bringing back uh, 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 their weekly television. They're actually moving to Wednesday nights, and it's going to be on FUBU Sports, I believe. I got to double check on that. So Wednesday F- nights? Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Yeah, the, the war is real, brother. <laughs> it's, uh, well, actually, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. So I was going to say the Wednesday night wars might not be against AEW and at MLW instead of NXT. So uh, this is something I want to get into. So as always with Philip on the show, he is, of course, our AEW correspondent. We're going to break down this week's episode of AEW Dynamite. A lot of stuff to talk about, especially this one. It was a big episode because it was the fallout from All Out. <laughs> I like that. It's a little, little rhyme there. So it was the, the first episode post all out. A lot of happen, a, a lot of things happened on this show and also give big congratulations to AEW. This past Wednesday, they had a huge ratings night for them. What was it, Philip? Over 1 million, uh, lo- it, 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 1 it million. Was, oh, it was over 1 million, which, you know, 20 years ago, that would have been super low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Dude, like back in the day, I forgot it was one episode of Raw. They had a, a 10 share. It was like over 10 million people watching. I think it was Austin Taker. I think it was some tag match. I don't know if you if you have if you're able to look it up on your phone, but I mean back in the day in the late 90s, early 2000s, WWE especially Raw, they were getting like anywhere eight to nine million on a regular basis. It was uh, and like I think some of their shows they were getting yeah up to like 10 million uh, viewers every week. I'm like God, like. Not many shows get that much any ratings anymore just because the whole landscape of television consumption has changed so much. And, I mean, people in general, like, we don't watch TV so much live anymore. We watch a lot of stuff on demand, on our DVR, streaming, and YouTube. I mean, there's so many different ways now. But, uh, yeah, no, back in the day, I forgot what episode it was. It was I think it was an Austin Taker. I don't know if it was a tag team match or something, but... It was like over I, 10 million people watching. I remember the Briscoes were in like a segment or a match and they did like an 8 million. They did like an 8 million rating. Yeah. Which is weird for the Stooges. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I have the AEW rating though. Okay. What is it? Uh, 1.016 million. And then wow. looking at uh, NXT, this Tuesday. they did a 838,000. Raw did a 1.725 mil. I didn't know that. Man, so a lot of people do this. So lately, when they're comparing uh, NXT and AEW, they combine the two numbers and compare against up to Raw and SmackDown. So, okay, if you take the 800-something thousand and the one-point-something million viewers, so that combined is over, what, 1.9 million. So collectively, that's more than Raw. But then again, how many of those people probably watch Raw as well? So it's a little bit of a... Of a biased number, but nonetheless, I think people are saying collectively, Raw and NXT, or excuse me, NXT and AEW have more uh, more viewers than Raw this week. So anyway, it's an interesting number, and it just shows for both shows going on when they're going up, not going up against each other, unopposed. They're both doing incredible numbers. AEW, congrats to them! I think it's their first one point or one plus million viewers. What since? Uh, uh, what was it? November, I think it was of last year, since they have that many people. And for NXT, it, it's, uh, normally when they're going up against AEW, they average what? 600 to 700,000. So the fact they're over 800,000, that's, uh, I mean, it's a winner for both of them this week. NXT was week number two, part two of their, uh, Super Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, AEW, the fallout from, uh, all out. So, so Philip, when you see these numbers, 
it leads once again to this open discussion about the current state of pro wrestling, specifically the weekly television, who appears on what night. And I think a couple of weeks ago, it was a wrestle vote tweeted out. There was rumors of a discussion of NXT might be moving to Tuesday nights for NXT, uh, their weekly show. And nothing was confirmed yet. It's just rumors at this point, but also kind of the super Tuesday that they've been doing the last couple of weeks. They've had amazing numbers. Uh, the, the Iron Man match a couple weeks ago or last week, I should say was over like 900 something thousand viewers, million view or 900,000 viewers. And then, uh, this week, as you say, over 800,000 viewers. So it, it's, they're doing so well when they're not going up against AEW. And so, like, Philip, I'll just throw the question out to you. Uh, if you were the powers that be, would you move NXT to uh, Tuesday nights or keep them on Wednesday nights? Um, I, I don't know, man. I think people are accustomed to NXT being on Wednesday nights. And, you know, there are people that prefer NXT over WWE, and that's fine. But uh, you have to look at USA. Like, what do they show on Tuesdays that needs to be shown? Most likely Suits or Psych or something like that. Law and Order SVU. Yeah, from like 2009. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't don't know, man. But, you know, I I didn't – I mean, I was alive during the Monday Night War, but I was like two. (laughs) You know, so this is my trying to experience it even though we have DVR and streaming and all this other stuff. Preferably, I'd like it to stay on Wednesday nights. I'd like to see how numbers compare. I really would. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting because like okay, yeah, like from a wrestling fan, of course, it's kind of fun for someone like me. I was in middle school and high school when the original Monday Night Wars took place, and yeah, Monday Night was so much fun as a wrestling fan because you're tuning in and either if they're on at the same time. Well, I, I think I told you this before. So for me, living out here in the Bay Area on the West Coast. Uh, TNT on our old cable comp- or package back in the day, whatever company it was back then, we uh, TNT used to have the East Coast time on. So I used to be able to watch Monday Night Nitro at 5 p.m. And, you know, it would be two hours and eventually it got bumped up to three hours. That's the thing. Everyone gives WWE crap for having a three hour show for Raw every week. Night show back in the day was three hours. So I'm used to a three hour program. And then. After that, I would flip over to USA. And I remember you, on USA, it would start at 8.57 was uh, Monday Night Raw. And so watch that for two hours, you know, for up until 11 p.m. that night. And they would always run over, like, it was like anywhere from five to ten minutes over uh, past 11 p.m. So I used to be able to watch both shows separately in the same night. I didn't have to worry about flipping over from one channel to the other. I know a lot of people probably went in the East Coast back then, since they were both airing live at the same time, would have to pick and choose. I don't know. We didn't have DVRs back then. We didn't have the internet to watch clips online. So I, I'm sure some people probably would just like set the VCRs and record one and watch the other one. But anyway, back then, it was a legit, like a bigger deal of the war because you had to pick and choose what to watch in real time. And once it aired, you never got to see it again because like I said, we didn't have DVR. So if you missed it, you were SOL. So, um, but now looking ahead now in present time with DVRs and all that stuff and, and just the way how TV's functioning now, of course, like you said, it's always a fun, like humble brag and discussion of if you're a WWE fan versus AEW fan, if your show did for the better ratings. But listen, AEW has been winning consistently over the last year. I think a- NXT only won, what, like three or four times in the last year. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I remember there was a couple weeks where they won a few uh, in a row. I don't know if it was like leading up to WrestleMania or whatnot, but. For the most part, AEW's been dominating as far as the number of wins. So, uh, like, I'm not saying, like, NXE, this is like, if they moved uh, Tuesday nights, I don't think this is so much them waving the white flag and they they, they lost. But it, it's it just doesn't make sense to stay on Wednesday nights and just keep losing and losing badly as far as, like, there's over 100 plus thousand difference in the numbers but also in the, the key demos they're like i think some weeks like in the, in the 50 range so they're 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 only getting a much older demographic and they're like losing to other shows but when they're on tuesday nights by themselves not going up against any other wrestling programming they do so much better so i, I know philip i just it makes more sense if they go to tuesday nights uh, i mean 
you know, you know, then c- can our buddy Chris Jericho still brag about being the demo god? <laughs> See, that's so bad they moved to another day. I do. That'd be more fuel for the fire for him and his ammo. But listen, like I know it might kind of suck because there's a lot of podcasts out there who focus on the Wednesday Night Wars. So if, like, I'm just saying, if if NXT moves to Tuesdays and AEW stays on Wednesdays, there's no more Wednesday Night Wars. So I think a lot of these people's podcasts. That like just you know talk about these shows and like these YouTube channels, the the shows become a little obsolete in that sense. Unless you still just want to focus on AEW versus NXT in that capacity, as far as I mean, who which better show was the better show for the week. But it's not so much a war this, of the same night. Then you got a Tuesday night war. You got Dark. You got Impact. <laughs> you got N- NXT. So that brings up a great question: Is like okay, hypothetically speaking. Uh, if NXT moves to Tuesday nights, what happens to Impact Wrestling? Because these last couple of weeks when NXT was on Tuesdays, Impact's numbers took a big hit. And Impact's been doing a lot better post Slammiversary and all the, the, the buzz that they generate with all the new signings they had of all the free agents. So Impact's been doing really well in the last couple months. But unfortunately, the last two weeks with NXT up on the same night and time, they got crushed. So I see like a domino effect. If NXT moved to Tuesdays, Impact needs to move. And Thursday nights is open. So if I was them, I think going to Thursday nights would be the much better smart move on their part. uh, Even though it sucks because they had Tuesday nights all to themselves. But then again, it's you gotta look at what's best for your company and what the better draw. I, I mean, if if Impact were to go, go back to Thursdays, that's kind of poetic, you know. TNA Impact Wrestling was on Thursdays on Spike, yeah. And you know, I I, I wouldn't be opposed to watching it. it. It'd be like kind of like a little nostalgia factor for me and people who were fans of TNA during that time. And I do want to say R.I.P. to Barry Scott, yeah, who was the voice of TNA in those uh, those video packages and pay per views, kind of like a, a Morgan Freeman a Jace. A uh, role and and character and a uh, video a voice actor. Did he say Impact Wrestling? Or uh, I'm trying to yeah think, uh, yeah that was him, dude. TNA. <laughs> like, I'm that, not a that voice was guy. him, bro. He he added a gravitas to, to those video packages. You know, kind of sounds like the uh, the Allstate guy. <laughs> All, Allstate, you're in good hands. You, you know, like that's so RB Barry. I'm, the Allstate guy, dude, I know him from uh, Major League back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But um, so, that's, so anyway, uh, uh, I think it was a Serato. I think that was his name in the movie. <laughs> but um, so like, listen, when AEW was announced, they were going to be on TNT Wednesday nights. And then it was announced NXT was going to move from the WWE Network and be on the USA Network Wednesday nights and expand the two hours it was obviously counter programming to AEW and what they're doing. So I, I think the the original plan or the motivation behind all that was just to try to take out AEW and crush them as a company. But obviously, it's not working. AEW is winning in the ratings; they're getting more viewers each week. So, what do you do with NXT? Do you just keep staying on Wednesday nights and just losing every week to them? If you're okay with that, fine. Or do you want to have more eyeballs on your product every week and at least make that third brand much better and legit as far as it, it, it creating a, uh, some more buzz and generating some more popularity for it? Then move it to Tuesday night so more people can watch it on the regular, which is weird though. Like for me, like, okay, real talk, if it stays on Wednesdays, it's not the end of the world for me because listen, I, I've told you and I've said this on this podcast. My routine every Wednesday now is I'll get home, I'll open up my Roku, open up the TNT app, and what I love about the TNT app, they have the East Coast feed, so I can watch Dynamite West Coast time here, 5 to 7, take the hour break, and then from 8 to 10, watch NXT on the USA Network, so on my regular uh, Xfinity cable, so... I, I'm watching both in one night, so I'm still getting my four hours of wrestling. I'm watching both shows. It's not like I'm picking and choosing what shows to watch. I know a lot of people, they watch both shows in real time. Like at 5 o'clock, they'll watch one show on the television and one on their like uh, iPad or their phone or, or their computer. So it, it, it's it, because of just the internet today and, and streaming, Like you're able to watch both shows in real time. I think the hardcore fans do that. So I'm just saying for 
for the people out there, it, it, it's like I said, it, it, it would be better for NXT to move to Tuesday because, like I said, what's the point of staying on Wednesday nights and just keep getting your ass kicked from a numbers standpoint? Be- the only the only reason I could see them stay there is they just don't want to see AEW get higher numbers because theoretically, if NXT goes to Tuesday and AEW goes, stays on Wednesday, then they're getting potentially even more people like they can maybe grow past that million dollar I say million dollar million people mark and go up higher so maybe Vince rather keep NXT on Wednesday just to keep the numbers down that way versus moving them to Tuesday I don't know it felt it, it, it's it, it's a really interesting debate and situation here like I said, I think USA Network, I don't know who asked the final call. I, either Vince or the USA Network executives can make the final call what they want to do. If USA is tired of losing and see that they have better numbers on Tuesday, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they tell Vince McMahon, we're going to move it to Tuesday and you just got to deal with it. I don't know. We shall wait and see. But I think for, from a number standpoint, it makes more sense to have NXT move to Tuesday get the better numbers every week and that way they can just grow and give people more opportunity to watch them on a regular basis and grow their audience versus AEW just sitting there on Wednesday nights uh, getting ass kicking from them. So I don't know. We shall wait and see. It's going to be really interesting uh, how this plays out and you know what each promotion does with this. All right, Philip. So let's go ahead and jump on over to uh, this week's episode of Dynamite. And like I said, it was the fallout from All Out. And like we always do, we'll give our initial thoughts on this show and we'll break down the card. So what do you think of this week's episode of Dynamite? Uh, yep. I'm trying, trying to remember what happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there were things I liked. Uh, there were things that was like, oh, okay, you know. All in all, I, th- I thought it was decent. I thought it was a decent episode of Dynamite. I really yeah. did enjoy the main event, though. Oh, really? Uh, Brody Lee and Dustin Rhodes? Absolutely. I, I, I thought that was very nice. Yeah, it was – you know, it's not the two biggest names in the company per se. It's not a member of the lead. It's not one of the hot indie darlings that AEW has. You know, it's two veterans, Dustin Rhodes and – Brody Lee, but I did enjoy about that, and I know I'm skipping ahead already to the main event, was I enjoyed the fact that the TNT Championship was the main event, was the title on the line for the main event. So I think it's really cool to kind of really uh, solidify the value of that title. It is the TNT Championship. It's the championship of that network. So it makes sense for that championship to be defended as the title for a main event bout. You know, no offense to Cody, but Cody, when he did his open challenges, when he was champion, it was always like in the middle of the show, usually. I know he defended against Brody Lee, and that was the main event on that one Saturday night episode, but it was always like in the middle of the card. It was never like the main event, but with Brody Lee, I, I would totally think it's cool that they would make it part of the main event scene more often on that on a weekly episode of Dynamite. No, yeah, absolutely. I think... I think Cody defended in the main event twice. Was it twice? I remember. Yeah, I think I remember one match led to him facing Hager at Fighter, and then the other one he lost it to Brody Lee. But yeah, I mean the TNT Championship. It is the Championship of America's Greatest Network. <laughs> it should it should be in the main event. <laughs> Absolutely, with and, Mr. Brody Lee. Yeah, so like I'm with you. Like I, I felt this show was solid. There were some good moments. There were some okay moments. I, I think, if anything, it kind of progressed more of the storylines, which is cool. I mean, that's that's what we need on an episode of Dynamite. So uh, the opening segment, very interesting. We see Tony Schiavone out in, like, in a parking lot. These cars pull up, and we see MJF and Chris Jericho both jump out of their car, and they greet each other, and they're both, like, kissing each other's ass and, like, you know, Jericho's telling MJF, great match on, on Saturday at All Out. You, you, you're definitely going to be a champion real soon in your young career. And then uh, MJF was talking to Jericho and be like, I, you, you're going to be a champion again very soon. And then the second they both walked away, they got split screen. They both call each other losers. <laughs> so, I mean, listen, it Jericho and MJF have great chemistry together. We saw that at the end of last year. Remember they had the segment in the ring talking crap about Cody and they're like they were both like saying the same words at the same time and so i I, like for both being heels right now they both are excellent you know doing these segments together and i would love to see more of that but then again but the fact that they call each other losers do you think we're gonna see a jericho versus mjf match very soon uh i i don't know I, i i don't know you know i mean with what jericho announced uh, that he wants to be in the tag team scene with uh, the big hurt, Jay Hager. 
um, that that may be that may be a little um l- little far down the line. Yeah. Maybe if, maybe if there's a tournament of some sorts, you could you can get a one off with uh, Maxwell and uh, Christopher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. It, it's uh, there's no reason right now because of both heels. So what do we, we what do we get out of it other than maybe some great in ring promos building up to the match itself? But yeah, for them to actually face off, like don't rush into it right now. You can always save that for down the road. But anyway, so we jump into the actual main show, the first show of the night. The Lucha Brothers taking on Jurassic Express. High flying match. I, I mean, come on, listen. At this point, we know what we're going to expect when we see Lucha Brothers in the ring. Pentagon and Ray Phoenix are just amazing. Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. So, dude, this match was awesome. Any, uh, any thoughts for you about this match itself? Yeah. Um, why are the Lucha Bros losing when they have this new alliance with Eddie Kingston? Yeah. Uh, look, Pentagon is one of the most badass Luchadors ever. Why is he losing? You know, like I, I, I don't, I don't get that. I don't, I don't fully understand that. You know, um, if the Lucha Bros aren't going to be in the tag team scene, honest to God, split them up. Let Pentagon be the Pentagon he was in Impact. Let mm-hmm. him be the Pentagon that he was in uh, Lucha Underground. Hell, let him be the Pentagon that has come to APW a couple over the last couple of years and have that real ambiance, that presence about him. I don't feel that when he makes his entrance anymore, Huey. Yeah, I'm with you. Like when uh, I first started learning about Pentagon's uh, popularity, when he was really, you know, taking off, you know, his time on the Gen the ground, also an impact and, and everywhere else he's been, he was like, getting, like, dude, when we saw him at APW, you know, this is an independent show in the Bay area. The crowd was so hot for him and cheering on for him and reacting to him, his call and response with the Santo Miero. Like, it was awesome. So I'm with you. It's like, he's, he doesn't feel as special as he used to feel just within the last year. Now, granted, th- there, there's there been a, a couple things. I mean, his time in AEW, he's been more focused as a tag team specialist with his brother, Ray Phoenix. But but now the tag team division is so stacked with so many people. I think they really felt kind of to the sideline at this point. And also with them, I mean, I know, listen, with the pandemic, there were some travel issues. I think they were in Mexico, so they couldn't get into the country. So I think that's why they were off TV for a couple months. So they lost some momentum that way. And that's just unfortunate. That's just uh, one of the things that happened because of this pandemic. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. Like, I love Ray Phoenix as well. I, I see, like, he reminds me very much like Ray Mysterio. So I see big things from both of them. Like I enjoy them as tag teams, as a tag team. But yeah, both of them ha- have potential to be such amazing single stars. So for this match itself, Jurassic Express did get the win. The uh, Lucha Brothers were trying to do a Canadian Destroyer, um, and uh, the ex- Jungle Boy got out of the way and actually did to each other. And uh, Jurassic-, Jurassic Express got the victory, and then. The Lucha Brothers were pissed off, pushing each other. Eddie Kingston, Butcher the Blake come, came out running to the ring, trying to break it up. What do you think about this whole segment with Eddie Kingston, like trying to play peacemaker with everyone? Um, fine, but what the hell? Why? why what's the point of the wink? You know, <laughs> I didn't lose. Check the rules. Wink. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like what? Uh, uh, like stop. Let, let's stop trying to be too cute here. Yeah, I mean, I felt that segment itself took way too long. It, it, it's annoying because Eddie Kingston spends more time. Stop it! Break it! Break it up! Stop! Stop! Like he spends more time. It's like, guys, come on, we gotta keep this segment moving along. Like, okay, you can say stop it, stop it, pull him apart a couple times, but if he spent like felt like forever trying to break it up. It's like, and then he starts talking. And listen, I, I appreciate the fact that AEW. Their wrestlers don't have a script necessarily when they go out there and do the promo. But I've noticed sometimes, though, some of these promos in the ring get a little long-winded. They sometimes the, the, the wrestlers kind of ramble on a little too much. Sometimes, like, less is more. And I think in this situation, like, Eddie Kingston, okay, the last few weeks we've been seeing him having this weird alliance of these two tag teams thrown together. And, like, I don't know what the connection with all five of them are other than that they all wrestled with each other on the on the indie scene apparently or something but anyway it was just taking way too long for them they're like stop breaking up breaking up breaking up telling butcher the blade telling was it the uh the blade like where's your wife and calling out Allie, who's you know doing her thing with qt marshall right now and it just felt like a really odd segment just like i said took way too long and also i just what's the point of all them working together (laughs) like really it's like this needs to start progressing i don't know look um in a couple weeks 
Butch and the Blade versus Lucha Bros. Winner gets the services of Eddie Kingston. They're, they're we're done. <laughs> yeah. We're done. Um, moving move on. on. Yeah, yeah, totally. And we'll move on from that as well. But yeah, going back to you say with the Lucha Brothers, if, if they're not going to do more with them in the tag team division, yeah, then split them up and let them both be, uh, push them as single stars because I see big money for both of them. But then again, the tag, the, the whole division is stacked with so much new talent and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, next up, we saw Jake the Snake Roberts and the Murder Hawk Monster Lance Archer cut a promo in an alleyway in the rain, which was kind of interesting seeing the rainfall pour down on them. But they pretty much told <laughs> Jake Roberts said, uh, Moxie's going to piss himself or wet himself when he fights Lance Archer. Uh, what you think of this promo? Just start building up, uh, the rivalry between the two of them, Moxley and Lance Archer. A couple things here. When they're in the rain, I, I thought of, you know, the song, A Million Raindrops. Or, you know, hit me with the new edition, Can You Stand the Rain? But, uh, seriously, I got a question for you, Hubie. Yep. What is the point of having a ranking system for, you know, for uh, championship contention, but then to go do a battle royal? Yeah. What is what is Lance Archer ranked at? Do you know off the top of your head? No, I, I don't. You know, uh, Brandon, my co-host for the Bullet Cats, he, br- he brought this up. Uh, sometimes, you know, the top contender doesn't always get an opportunity at the championship right away, yeah. which, okay, but this isn't UFC. You know, <laughs> MJF was the top contender. He lost. The next person uh, behind him should be ranked up. It should move like that, mm. you know? like Okay. What, what, what are we doing here? Yeah, and that's one thing I, I kind of worried about when they all announced this ranking system last year is, sure, you could follow this ranking system, but that means are you going to start forcing – matchups together that don't make sense so i I mean from a storyline standpoint makes sense because lance archer won the battle royal and the stipulation was winner gets a title match and that's what we're seeing play out right now i guess i'd rather see that than them forcing all right number two steps up now the next after who's after mjf like okay you're 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 next to fight him now so you 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 got to force him together you know what you could do for the battle royal make it just once a year at all out and Whoever the least ranked contenders are, like I'm sure there are 20 people that aren't high up on the list, they're in the battle royal or whatever, and the winner gets to jump the shark. Yeah, you I, can do that. I, yeah, totally. And, and that's the thing I'm I'm saying is like, yeah, having a rankings is cool. I guess that way people can kind of uh, it gives them all like a way to identify their place within the company and their power ranking for you know like how important they are at that time right now. But other than that, yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense. So like, okay, Moxley beat MJF, who was number two or the number one contender. Okay. So you jumped to number two and like, just out of nowhere. All right. You two are fighting each other. Got to go make a storyline. And so it's like, it kind of feels like you're forcing that storyline down our throat. So that's why I'm kind of like, sometimes power rankings don't make sense. Like I'd rather have a compelling story versus, all right, you're the number two contender now you're automatically going to face them. I mean, it makes more sense in like UFC or something because, you know, they're not built off storylines. They're just built up on matchups and, and, and rankings there. I get that in challengers, but this is pro wrestling. Like there's a the story element involved. So the, the next person to fight Moxley is, should be the right challenger. In this case, it was Archer because he earned it from his winning the battle Royal. So, I don't know, but nonetheless, I enjoyed the promo. <laughs> and anytime we see Jake the Snake talk, it's always great. And I'm, I'm still gearing up. I just wonder if commentary are going to acknowledge their history in New Japan. For us wrestling fans, that'd be cool if they would acknowledge their history, as at least you know with their matchup at Wrestle Kingdom and for the U.S. title. I don't know if they'll go there or if they're allowed to bring it up. And New Japan will give them crap for it, but I think it'd be really cool to hear that. And then next up, <laughs> another promo. I think. Everyone could not wait to hear it out. So it was the Matt Hardy promo. He came out and it's a special announcement. He more or less came to the ring and just acknowledged he had a really nasty fall and at, at, at all out, but he's doing much better. All the tests says he doesn't have a concussion. He uh, thanked his wife for the support, who was also in attendance. And he says he's going to take some time off to rest up and get better. So, Philip, I don't know about you. If, okay, and I saw a lot of people on Twitter posting this. Okay, if he tested negative, he doesn't have a concussion, but he needs time off to heal up, 
Isn't that a sign that he probably did get a concussion? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, is this their way of trying to cover that up? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Um, he may not be like fully concussed, but there may be some swelling to his brain or something yeah. and competing that could okay. uh, damage it further on. But I don't know, man. Really? He's not concussed. Like he was looking past everybody. <laughs> I, I need these medical records. I know you, you know HIPAA law. You can't release them or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I I need to see something. Yeah, it was very interesting just seeing this segment. It's like I wonder by him coming out there and doing this promo it was a little bit of damage control from what happened on Saturday. And I think maybe the powers that be, Tony Khan, whoever, wanted Matt Hardy to come out and cut this promo just to let everyone know that he's okay because how much crap they were getting. Post show during the show and posts all out have how oh he's concussed why'd you let him continue so I think from like I said damage control standpoint they want him to go out there and say I'm okay I'm just gonna take some time off right now and rest up and heal up so there's something there he's not 100 percent and he took a nasty fall and by all means whether or not he's concussed or not considering how bad that fall fall was I want him to stay home rest for a while get better he's much older takes a little bit longer for someone his age to heal up. I don't want him rushing into some another program that could potentially hurt himself again. So I'm just glad him and Sammy Guevara, that seems to be done right now. I hate to say it, but that whole rivalry seemed to be cursed. So I'm just glad it's done with let them move on to different programs and let Matt Hardy go up, go up and rest. But, dude, <laughs> the one thing I, I laughed was just his wife, uh, Rebby, who was standing there holding their youngest son, she had the mask on, but her eyes, she was like giving the death stare to Matt Hardy. You could tell like she was pissed. How about you? Did she read her body language? It looked like she was pissed. Like you're coming home with me tonight. Let me say, let, let me, re, let's rephrase all that before I say something that gets me canceled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, see like anger in her eyes you know i just saw her you know having concern for her uh, her husband the father of her children uh or whatever but you know matt you know he, he has something to go home to he has his kids he has his lovely wife he has uh his uh mower of lawn he has senior range on yes. yeah yeah <laughs> He'll be all right, man. And he did say he he's looking to become a contender for the AEW World Title. I'm mean, I'm interested for that. Can yeah. Matt Hardy capture an AEW World Championship, Huey? It'd be interesting. Like I don't know necessarily. I think the world the uh, the World Championship. There's a lot of people going for that right now. I mean, I could definitely see him go after the TNT Championship. That might be something him against Brody Lee down the road if Brody Lee's still champion. Because keep in mind the. Uh, was it Matt Hardy, I think, announced on Talk is Jericho that the original plan was for him to be the leader of the Dark Order, but they changed it up last minute and made Brody Lee the, the leader of it. Sorry, the break fate, but that's what happened. So maybe the guy who's supposed to be the Dark Order leader versus the actual guy that's the leader of Dark Order, that could be a little fun uh, matchup there down the road. But yeah, I, I, I think for him, maybe the TNT Championship is more... Uh, uh, in his reach, per se, to grab, go for it. I don't know. There's something about an aging vet who's on his last legs trying to become a world champion. There's something about that. St- K- Tim Storm a Jace. Ah. The NWA title, you know? I okay. mean, Matt, Hardy, Matt Hardy's not a school teacher, but, you know, you know, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's something about it, man. Yeah, okay, I could see that. That could be kind of interesting, see Matt Hardy, if they want to build him up for that. Uh, whoever the champion is at that time. So that could be something there. Cool. All right. I'll, I'll look for that. But nonetheless, Matt Hardy, please go home, rest, be there for your three boys and your wife. And yeah, we'll see you, uh, in the near future when you're feeling a lot better. Uh, next up, we saw a, finally another match. It was a lot of promos this night. So we finally got another match of the night. Orange Cassidy take on, taking on the hybrid twos, Angelico, uh, and also his partner, Jack Evans came out. Solid match between the two, and Orange Cassidy got the win here. I forgot this guy was even with the company. I know, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Highlighter. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, who are these people? Oh, they. I, I forgot they were like big fixtures a year ago, but I haven't seen them since. Yeah, that's the thing. They were they were big free agent signs last year, and they did a few matches and a pay per view or something. But then they were gone for the longest time. They're just off TV, and then even with this pandemic. I think they both live in Mexico, surprisingly. I, I think that was part of the issue, was just travel issues. So very much like the Lucha Brothers, they couldn't get into the country. But even still, I mean, no offense to them, but they're just not as 
big as names compared to other people on the roster. So that's why I kind of forgot about them. I know they did some cool things in Lucha Underground, but listen, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm curious if these guys can turn around and become like a bigger, bigger deal in AEW. But nonetheless, I mean, hey, glad to see they've got some TV time, but, uh, Orange Cassidy got the victory here. The bigger story was what happened afterwards. So Orange Cassidy was in the ring after his win. Santana Ortiz jumped him, beat him up. His buddies, best friends came out to make the save. And then uh, best friends announced next week, Santana and Ortiz versus them in a parking lot match. So, uh, Philip, any uh, early predictions who might win that one? Santana and Ortiz need to win this. Yes. They, they need this for their career. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that's what's going to happen. be funny to see how this plays out in the parking lot. I wonder if uh, another van will be uh, uh, taken out in the course of the match. And next up, maybe my favorite segment of the night. So we saw Alex Marvez backstage looking for an interview with the Young Bucks. And he's knocking on the door. No answer. Finally, the door opens up. The Young Bucks come out, open up the door. They look pissed off. They got that new edge, right? That's how, that's how they've been being booked lately. They got a little bit of an edge and a little bit of an attitude. And uh, they don't want to talk to Alex Marvez. So instead, they both give him a super kick party. He goes flying. I loved it. I mean, I think we all cheered seeing Alex Marvez getting a super kicked out of that. So, uh, um, dude, Philip, your thoughts on just Young Bucks kind of... I want to say they're not being heels per se, but they've got this tougher edge right now. Um, if the young bucks, if the young bucks weren't going to kick Alex Marvez, I, I probably would have. I'm sorry, <laughs> just, just yeah, you know. Um, I, I I like this. You know, this reminds me of uh, the the bucks from a couple years ago. You know, yeah, um, from those glory days of BTE and in Ring of Honor in Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 a fan of these bucks. I like these bucks. Yeah, and I say that might have been my favorite segment of the night, but I think the next segment was the most popular one, hands down. Especially if you go look at their YouTube numbers of which video did the best this week. So. Kip Sabian, super bad. Kip Sabian comes out to the ring with his fiance, Penelope Ford. And as we saw uh, on All Out, they announced they were going to come to the ring and announce who the best man was because they are going to get married, I guess, on an episode of Dynamite at some point. Who knows whenever that's going to happen. But he announced he was going to reveal who the best man was. And so they're doing their thing in the ring. And all of a sudden he says, here's the best man. And we see this guy Puff come out. Now, Philip, do you know who this Puff guy is? He's a bigger, bigger, heavy set dude. Apparently he's a he's a indie wrestler. I don't know too much about him. Do you know anything about him? I've never seen the guy a day in my life. But okay. he, he, you know, Kip Sabian told him to go to something like not take up so much space. Like, are we really fat shaming in twenty twenty guys? I know, man. I was like, Hey, I'm a big guy. I'll go like, see I'm a I'm a, I'm a hefty boy. I'll go super kick uh, Kip Sabian myself, but I guess K Fabi's playing a heel. So yeah, and then uh, um, uh, BPJ Brian Pillman Jr. comes out there on his birthday and looks like a dork. <laughs> he looks great though, like shape wise, dude. Like he's been working out, dude. He's awesome. Which it's so interesting. So uh, listen, Brian Pillman Jr. friend of the show. He uh, he's been appearing on dark as of late on uh, sporadic episodes he also was on a match on dynamite right didn't he take on cody for the the tnt championship i believe was he one of the no or, I... no no spears i'm sorry he was taking on sean spears that's what it was and um so it was cool to see him make an appearance another again on dynamite but the other thing was last week on uh mlw pulp fusion that's like their weekly uh youtube series it's they're usually like six to ten minutes long it kind of gives you an update what all the wrestlers on the roster are doing so even though they're not having matches they're trying to still tell stories about what they're doing during this pandemic and at the end of last week's episode uh brian pilma jr returned and attacked the two guys that have been beating him up uh beginning of this year so uh it was uh uh i think it was myron reed that's his name and the other guy um uh, from injustice and brian pillman jr beat him up with chairs and he says i'm back or so they made mlw made a big thing about it that brian pillman jr is back so brian pillman jr awesome if he can do aew and mlw shows together at the same time i'm all for it i love brian pillman jr i say big things for him and then he told uh, Kip Sabian told Brian Pillman Jr. to get out of here, and he says, "Here is the real best man." And all of a sudden, we see this large figure walking out through the tunnel, and this theme song, "The best, 
the best man. Like this, this theme song, I can't do it justice. But uh, we see outcoming Miro, formerly known as Rusev in the WWE. He made his big debut for AEW and he comes out to the ring to a huge applause from the crowd that were in attendance. And uh, Philip, your thoughts on Miro officially signing with AEW? It's Miro Day! <laughs> um, you, you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I <laughs> mean, um, you know, sign up Aiden English. His mother-in-law and wife work there. Why not? Why not him too? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking looking at it, you know, um, happy for him. You know, happy he's uh, found a place of work. Miro Day that has a nice little ring to it. I am so sick and tired of the whole brass ring promo. You can take your brass ring and shove it up your ass. Like, dude, we get it. It didn't work out. Like, I'm, like Brody Lee doing the same. Like, I'm, I'm really sick of all these guys doing this. EC3 is the perfect example to where he should be the most pissed off out of anybody. Yeah. But he was on Jericho's podcast, and he said, look, it didn't work out. That's unfortunate. Time to move on. Guys, I'm sorry. You, so a lot of you should have been used better. Absolutely. It's time to move on. Like, don't worry about it. Or if you're going to throw a shot at WWE, at least be super clever about it. Don't just be blatant with it, you know? Yeah. It's uh, it's really interesting. Like, all these guys, when they leave WWE, like their first promo in the next promotion that they go towards, they got to sound a little bitter and acknowledge WWE in some capacity and throw shade at them. <sighs> Okay, out of all of them, I mean, with Rusev or Miro, I should say, excuse me, like, I, I think for all of them, maybe they're all entitled to at least maybe one promo, throw shade WWE, but then move on after that. It's like no more acknowledging. I mean, part of me, it, 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 it's starting to get just a little tiresome, if, I'll be honest. I mean, like, everyone is doing it. I mean, as you said, Brody Lee, you know, with the Vince McMahon, uh, you know, acting like Vince McMahon in, uh, when he first debuted. So I see all these guys, they all are throwing shade and it's just, it's, it's starting to get a little old, but I guess for Miro, okay, he, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let him have one. He could do one promo like that, but after that, move on, do your own thing now, develop your own character more. So anyway, I, I'm excited. I, I know there was a lot of discussion. Like he was like, Phil, if I remember correctly, he was like the last guy that hadn't signed yet of all the big names that were released back in April. Am I right? He was like the last one who having like decide what he's going to do. Like everyone else, even Mike Bennett, he's going to be working with NWA. It looks like right now. So he was the last guy that hadn't signed anywhere. I think a lot of people were trying to figure out what's he going to do next. So do you think this is the best fit for him in AEW? Oh, uh, well it, it really depends, man, on, uh, how he's going to be used, you know, I, I like how he, you know, the last time we saw him, he was in a wedding angle. Now, now he's involved in this yeah. uh, kind of little, little, little play on something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see, man. Yeah. It's uh it's going to be interesting. So what I'm worried and I hope they don't fall down this path. So we see all these like big new shiny toys that sign with AEW specifically like the big monster type guys. They automatically get thrown in the world title picture, main event, a pay-per-view against the champion, and then they lose, and then they become like old news again. Case in point, like Brody Lee, you know, when he was uh, taking on Moxley, luckily Brody Lee's kind of gained new momentum as the TNT champion. Brian Cage, Lance Archer, uh, or that's, excuse me, that's one more about Lance Archer as well. So, like, I, that's my one thing I'm worried about. So, if, if Miro can maybe... Being maybe in that in the mid card scene right now and kind of just uh, play his time out there, work it out there, and maybe build him up to a main event scene down the road. I think that would be great if that way it's a little of a more organic build up for him. I'm excited for him, and also I guess word came out about his contract. So it looked like he signed by a year deal with AEW, and with that he's able to work New Japan dates, which is great over in Japan, and but he can't appear. Uh, on any other American wrestling show, but he can still do indie bookings as well. So that'd be great. I, I think that'd be awesome if he can still work some indie shows. Hopefully, maybe he can do some of the AP, uh, with APW. He does have ties with Marcus Mack. Marcus Mack used to be his manager way back in the day when he was, uh, on the indie scene back then. So who knows? Maybe they can work some magic out and have him appear out here. But anyway, I'm excited for him. I think this would be a great fresh start for him. Kind of curious of like what's his look gonna be. I mean, he's got the blonde hair now, but uh, I, for him, he's great. He, as far as 
he knows how to get over. He can be very serious, aggressive in the ring, but he can also be very comedic. He has a great personality. Uh, I, I, I just, I see big things for him, and I think he could be fun. And you, listen, I know we can't say Rusev Day, but we could chant the best man, the best man. So that'd be a great chant. But yeah, I wonder how soon is Aiden English? Like, I, I, I wonder if they'll try to make an attempt to sign Aiden English, as you mentioned. His, his wife, uh, Shaw Guerrero, has been doing some ring announcing for them. Vicky Guerrero, his mother in law, is working there. So I wonder if they'll bring him back. How about this? Maybe. Miro turns on Kip Sabian down the road and then he aligns himself with Aiden English as his new manager and they re- reignite that old uh, chemistry they had back a couple years ago. That would be pretty cool. No, I'm, I'm, I'm down for that uh, 100%. You know, like I said, Vicky's there, Shaw's there. Just make it a family affair. Yeah, totally. So, And Aiden English, he could do commentary as well. We saw that with WWE. So I don't know what his plans are right now. I, I, I They live in Chicago, so I don't know if he has any plans to come back to wrestling or any desire, but I know he's like big in whiskey. I saw that with his interview with Chris Van Fleet. So anyway, I, I hope he uh, does come back in the wrestling at some point, but yeah, maybe him and Miro can uh, realign themselves. Uh, next up, we saw this Hangman Adam Page segment uh, with Tony Schiavone. Uh, Philip, your thoughts on that whole segment with the two? Um, Hangman Adam Page was like the hottest act coming into 2020, and it's gone downhill. You know, he... He, he's a shell of his former self. You know, mm-hmm. they say Kenny Omega le- left his wrestling heart in Japan. Maybe Hangman left his in a bar. I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. It, it was, he, he was somber. He was like, yeah. I, the, the Bucks should have been in, in the gauntlet. They should have had an opportunity. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, man. You know, you're talking about it. What are you going to do about it? You know? Yeah. So he was very sad, depressed, and he's upset that he lost his two of his best friends in the Young Bucks. And he was very stupid to think that FTR were like him and that him and Kenny lost the tag tiles. They have to climb their back way up. That's going to be their toughest test. So it's interesting. It's like he sounds like he's still he he wants to fix everything. He's very upset by his actions. He wants to do right by everyone. And it sounds like he still wants to work with Kenny Omega. From Kenny Omega's standpoint, which we'll get into shortly, that's not the case from Kenny Omega. So... I, I think this is the beginning of starting to build up Hangman Page as the top baby face in the company. I think that's where we're starting to see the foundation for. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, next up, we saw Chris Jericho and Jake Hager take on Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. And uh, the Inner Circle gets a victory here. Philip, your thoughts on this matchup between the two? Um, let, 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 let's, let's see. Let's see here. Joey Janela. <laughs> and sunny S- sunny kiss i i mean it, it, it was you know it was different we got to see how uh, really athletic sunny kiss is you know in his um maneuvers on jake hager and uh chris jericho i mean all in all uh, the inner circle did prevail and this is what i was talking about from earlier on in the show to where uh jericho said you know hey the inner circle we had a, we had a rough night we all lost but that doesn't matter that's in the past now Hager and I are going to build up our wins so we can be in the AEW Tag Team Championship scene. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jericho moving into the Tag Team title scene? Yeah, that was very interesting. So after they won, uh, Jericho went on the mic and said that him and Hager want to go after the AEW Tag Team Championship. So they have their eyes on FTR. To me, I'm like, why? That doesn't make sense. Listen, the Inner Circle has an established tag team in Santana and Ortiz. And listen, they were the big free agent signing for tag teams per se a year ago. So when their contract was up with impact last year, everyone was like, Oh, where are they going to go? Are they going to go to NXT? Are they going to go to AEW? Everyone was like, they should go to AEW because they're going to focus on tag team and treat them better versus NXT and WWE. They don't care about their tag team division. And sure enough, they did sign with AEW and everyone's like, great. Awesome. This is great news. They're going to put on banger matches with the young bucks and these other tag teams. And they should be tag team champions within a year. We have not seen that play out. And I'm a little bummed out for Santana Ortiz. Like I said, they were when they were at LAX and Impact, they were the like one of the top tag teams in the world. I feel like they they're not special anymore as well. They lost a lot of momentum. So for them, I, I think AEW, the powers that be, should be focusing on them and building them up. And they should be the tag team representing inner circle. Not Jericho and Jake Hager. So listen, I know they're busy with best friends, but as soon as that wraps up, start building them up to be in the main event scene for the tag team titles. I don't know why Jericho and Hager is doing this. I don't know why. Unless they're going to split up. 
Well, yeah, that that member uh, weeks ago I said um, Santana and Ortiz may realize that the last time they had true success was when they were with Eddie Kingston. So Kingston could get rid of Butcher Blade and uh, the Lucha Bros and go over to um go go over to uh go over to uh, Santana and Ortiz and then they can get out of the inner circle and then you can have a nice little tag feud. Yeah. And uh, Jericho and Hager could drop the titles to those guys. Yeah, maybe this the beginning of the inner circle breaking up. Cause they've, they've been together for a year now. So maybe, yeah, Santana, Santana Ortiz can approach Jericho and Hager and be like, why are you guys going after the tag titles? Let us handle that. And maybe that could be what breaks them ultimately apart. So maybe they have a Jericho and Hager match versus Santana Ortiz. And then the winner of that moves on to uh, the tag team title opportunity. So that could be something there. That's the only reason why I see this maybe happening. But when I heard that, I was like, what? I mean, I get it. Jericho, he's he's probably you know, he's doing his part to step away from the world title scene and let other people have an opportunity to go after that title against Moxley. And so this is, you know, he's done with this program with Orange Cassidy. So this is the next thing for him. I guess he feels like he wants to work on in AEW is the tag team division. But it just, to me, it just doesn't make sense because, like I said, with the inner circle, he has said Tan Ortiz. They should be the ones going after. Unless the team as a whole, they're just going to have two separate tag teams as part of the inner circle doing their thing right now. So maybe they just want to uh, run rough shot on the tag team division. But we'll see how this plays out. You saw MJF make an appearance as campaign headquarters. Obviously, he's very upset. He lost on Saturday at All Out. So he was yelling at everyone inside the headquarters. Pretty much said the campaign's done. Everyone get out of the room. And then even Wardlow was the last one in there. And he uh, had some words for Wardlow saying, you got a problem. Wardlow's staring him down. And... Uh, MJF says, like, you better back off your, you know, step down. Like, I own you or something like that. And so, uh, it looks like MJF and Wardlow are not seeing eye to eye right now. So, Philip, I don't know about you, but I think, like everyone else, we're anticipating for Wardlow to uh, eventually beat the crap out of MJF and probably have the biggest baby face turn ever in AEW short history. So, what do you think is going to happen with the two of them? So, here we go. Uh, this can play out to full gear. Why MJF turned on Cody then? That'll be a full year. Wardlow came in about that time. It'll be a full year of him being with the company. You can have Cody be like, I know we've had our differences, but here you go. Offer him an AEW contract that Tony Khan signs the paycheck for, thus getting the true emancipation of Wardlow. Mm. And then we move into full gear and have Wardlow beat MJF. Because I don't know if you've seen his, uh, his indie stuff, dude. I mean, I think he was the champion over at Warrior Wrestling. He could do tope planchas, tope con hilos, tope suicidas, Frankensteiners, poison ranas, hurricanranas, all the, all the works. Yeah. He has a great baby face moveset for a big guy. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I think more people will start to come into the crowd as we get to November. And imagine a nice pop for Wardlow to be a free of MJF. Dude, like I'm sure Vince or WWE is kicking themselves. How they missed this guy, Wardlow. A guy his size and moves the way he does, and if they don't have him under lock and key in WWE, that, that's a big miss on their part. But, hey, it's AEW's game. But, yeah, I'm with you. It, 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 it sounds like they're laying the seeds. Okay, if MJF owns Wardlow, what is Wardlow going to have to do to break free and be his own man in AEW? So I can see Wardlow being the crap out of MJF and yeah, earning his own, his own contract with the company. I love that idea. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we said next up was the newly crowned AEW tag team champions, FTR, come out to the ring with Tolly Blanchard and they had a victory celebration and all the other wrestler tag team wrestlers were around the ring. And long story short, they said they're the best. They, uh, they're the locker room leaders now and pretty much just told everyone, called everyone out that no one is safe around them. Philip, your thoughts on this whole promo here? Uh, well, you know, Tully Blanchard in, in all that heat dressed to the nines like it's 1989 again, brother. That's how you do when you're a horseman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. You know, they complimented certain guys, but in a heelish way, you know, D- Daniels and Kazarian. Hey, man, you know, if, if this were 20 years ago, who knows what have won because, you know, they're older guys. <laughs> Uh, they said we we liked you when we were kids. Or <laughs> yeah, that was that was funny to me, man. Um, they they took a dig at Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn, you're a tag team legend, but you're in a second rate Hall of Fame. <laughs> Don't say the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, then they throw shaded uh, the Jurassic Express, and then they all start to get in there. 
and uh, little Marco stunt dumps the coolers of beers on FTR. And so next week we will be getting FTR versus Luchasaurus uh, and Jungle Boy non-title. Okay, it's non-title. All right, I cannot wait to see uh, Jungle Boy take another beating in the ring. That's all he does. He takes a huge beating, then gets the hot tag for Luchasaurus, and Luchasaurus comes in, and then they either uh, lose and defeat still. So it's going to be interesting just uh, see what they do. So, uh, but hey, I, listen, we know it's going to be a fun match. Uh, we saw Taz come out on commentary. Uh, we see Darby Allen's music play, but instead of Darby Allen, it is Ricky Starks dressed up like Darby Allen. And so he talks some crap and it looks like that, that rivalry is still, still going. So we're going to probably see the two of them go at it very soon. Uh, next up, we saw Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero come out to the ring for a match against Tay Conti. First off, congrats to Tay Conti. It was announced earlier that day that she signed a contract with AEW. So the former NXT star is now officially all elite with AEW. Um, fill up your thoughts on this match, but also Tay Conti officially signing with the company. Um, fire Instagram, Tay Conti, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see what she could, what she's going to do. You know, we didn't really get to see that in NXT and WWE. Uh, but mo- moving on from that, really with the uh, the vicious vixens, <laughs> <laughs> um, Nyla Rose. You know, she got the job done. Beast Bomb. Uh, she's the number one contender, which she's been for 16 weeks. I don't know why Thunder Rosa got a shot it all out, but it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, just again with the ranking system, but uh, it, you know, it was fine. It was Nyla doing what Nyla does: show up, wreck somebody, leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with Tay Conti, yeah, with NXT, it's I don't know what the deal is. I don't know her full story. I know she's a was a judo expert, or she trains. So, like, I felt like it was always stop and go with her. Like, I would see her on an episode of NXT, and most of the time she would lose. Occasionally she might get a win against someone else that might be newer. But she never got into, like, a major program, if I remember correctly. She never appeared on a takeover. So, NXT just never really uh, invested too much time in her or never took her career to the next level. And so I understand why she was probably frustrated and wanted to leave. And, and I don't know what happened. Was her contract finally up? Is that why she left? I think what it was, but anyway, yeah, she never got to accomplish anything too significant in NXT. With that being said, I think AEW is a great spot for her, especially listen, the women's division is thin right now. So adding more bodies to that division is a help. She does have experience, obviously with her time in NXT, she does have a following. So I'm sure people that are fans of her will make the switch over and watch on AEW. She has a big social media following. So that helps them as well. So I think for AEW, it's a win, win all, all around, because like I said, it just, she's a legit wrestler. Uh, she, the strengthens the vision, adds more bodies to it. And yeah, she's a le- legit competitor. So puts on some great matches. So, and then, yeah, but nonetheless she took the loss here against Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose is number two ranked. So you got to keep her built strong as the, the beast of this division. And, uh, so we, they're beating her up. We saw Sheeta make the save, come out with uh, the kendo stick and, you know, pointed at them and so it looks like yeah they're gonna get their uh uh maybe another matchup because didn't they yeah they fight each other double or nothing so it looks like we're gonna get that rematch at some point soon so that'd be interesting to see how that plays out also we saw uh the announcers announced that the young bucks got fined five thousand dollars each for kicking alex marvez which i was not i thought that was pretty cool like was <laughs> Like it was like five thousand, they're probably gonna do it again. So they 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 did us a a a, a, a justice. Yeah, they the, don't need to be fine. The fans should pay for it because it was a thank you to all the fans. Uh, then we saw Jim Ross do an interview with Kenny Omega, and uh, Kenny said that there was no denying he and Hangman had chemistry. But then uh, Kenny was asked by JR, what's next for you? And he said, quote, we've got such a deep tag team division for us to get to that level where we got. We had to learn a lot about one another. And what I learned about Hey Man, I didn't like. I've got my own plans and goals. I think it's time I go back to singles action. So, yeah, Philip, your thought on uh, Kenny Omega's promo or uh, this this interview segment with JR. I, I thoroughly like this. You know, Kenny said, 
a week ago I was a tag champ. Now I'm not a champ. You know, what, what, what else do you want? Uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I, I really do want him to go back to being a singles guy. He left his wrestling heart in Japan. You know, the, the hair's gotten darker. Let's get the chrome dome back. Put it back on those sinister shades. Get the long black trench coat. Let's get the cleaner back. Let's yeah. get the cleaner at AEW. Yeah, man. Like, this was very much born like a heelish type promo. And he's, it looks like he's beginning the transformation back to uh, the cleaner mode. And listen, he said... You could tell he's frustrated with Hangman Page, and as he said in that quote, he uh, didn't like everything about Hangman, and I think in some ways he was acknowledging, like, I think he knows the fans were disappointed that he was so busy in the tag team division, we didn't get to see the Kenny Omega that was dominating in New Japan for the last couple of years, so I think that was his way of kind of making a wink to the audience that, listen, he knows people have been critical of his performance the last year in AEW. Like, they want the old Kenny Omega back. So I think by him saying what he said in this promo is that he is going to go back to uh, uh, the cleaner ways, his cleaner days. So I'm excited for that. I'm looking forward to a big push from him. And like I said earlier, if Heyman Page is going to be booked at the top babyface, book him as the top heel, I think the two of them can have I'm hoping for the best rivalry in 2021. So this is easily laying the foundation for um, for 2021. I think this could be the mega powers for this generation as far as two top guys that were working together as a tag team falling apart. One goes heel, one becomes the big baby face, and that could be the rivalry that leads most of next year. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And then uh, it was announced that on October 14th, it's going to be the anniversary edition of Dynamite of their launch on TNT. And we're going to get that AEW World Championship match with John Moxley taking on Lance Archer. And so, yeah, we have like what a month for them to build that up. And we're going to see more promos from both of them. I hope... I hope, like I said, the announcers do acknowledge their New Japan stuff. But I highly doubt it. And then we saw our main event. The AEW TNT Championship was on the line as the exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee, taking on uh, the natural Dustin Rhodes. Hard-hitting match. Uh, I was a little worried they were pushed for time because Cody Rhodes had a big announcement at the very end of the show, which, spoiler alert, it was just like, announcing he's going to be a judge on some game show. That's all it was. But uh, this match for itself, Philip, dude, awesome, hard-hitting match. For about 10 minutes, it was. Uh, yeah, man. I, I really I really enjoy this. It, it's Dustin Rhodes, you know, the, the, the aging vet who still has quite a bit left in the tank. Taking on a hoss like Brody Lee uh, for for the TNT Championship, America's Greatest Network title, <laughs> and yeah, I mean Dustin, he's fighting for his brother, he's fighting for the for the natural nightmares, for the nightmare family, for the Rhodes name, mm-hmm. and you know the, he got a lot more offense in than his brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Awesome. And, and, hands down. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this match for like I said, it's hard hitting. Two veterans, especially Dustin Rhodes. Like, listen, I know we give Chris Jericho a lot of praise for how well he performs at his age. Dustin's the same age, and he's going out there and still tearing it up as well. So credit to both of them. I just, listen, this is something I saw on Twitter. I'm so happy to see that AEW's highest rated show since November of last year it was a main event between Brody Lee and Dustin Rhodes. Like you would, th- that's that. That seems so odd. You would think it would be like maybe with Kenny Omega or Cody Rhodes or the Young Bucks. No, it was two non-members of the elite who were main eventing this show and had their highest rated numbers in over a year. So, dude, I, I'm so happy for both of them, and I think it just speaks volumes for how great the AEW fan base is. Like they'll tune in for this. So, listen, it was awesome. Brody Lee got the victory here. He retains the title. They uh, beat up Dustin Rhodes. They saw, uh, they brought the rest of the Dark Order came out with QT Marshall's body, threw him out in the ring. He was knocked out. Uh, Brody Lee yelled at Cole Cabana, told him to get out of the ring. So it looks like Cole Cabana is probably going to be <laughs> no longer just hanging out with the Dark Order. He's going to be on his way out very soon. So uh, listen, Dark Order is still being booked very strong. I like this. I think Dark Order finally is a legit faction now that we could take seriously. And uh, dude, I'm looking forward to see what more Brody Lee has in store. I'm, I'm digging Brody Lee. I think he's finally found his way now with, uh, with the EW and he's doing big things. And that TNT championship right now is looking very credible as their uh, second tier championship. 
Absolutely, man. Um, I, I pose this question to you. Who do you think beats Brody Lee for the TNT Championship? Hmm. I'm trying to think who can they build up. I mean, let's see, Darby Allen, he's busy with Ricky Starks. Let's see, Brian Cage. He's got the Boom, FT- boom, Colt Cabana. Boom, boom. Oh, you think you tend to challenge him? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think who else, like another baby face. Oh, Scorpio Sky. That's true, but I think with Colt, it makes the most sense. Because th- th- he was in the faction, so yeah. or, or just hanging out, as he keeps saying. Just uh, hanging out. I'm just hanging out, you know, just chilling. <laughs> um, which, by the way, I love Colt Cabana's tweet earlier today, <laughs> how his outfit was much cheaper than Miro's outfit. <laughs> if you have a chance, look at Colt Cabana's Twitter. Like, Miro bought, like... I uh, had this like expensive Gucci pants and shirt and he had like free shoes and a jacket from Excalibur and it was all like free. So he was like, he look, he's, he looks just as good, but for a lot cheaper. So it's all good, dude. But nonetheless, still a very fun episode of AEW Dynamite. Uh, we got to see them just start moving along new stories for, uh, for the company and moving forward. What's coming up. So yeah, here we are. We, I guess we could say we're beginning the road to full gear, which is going to be happening November 7th. So, uh, these handful of episodes coming up are going to be very busy, and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And congrats once again to AEW for uh, a big ratings week for them, and I hope they keep that momentum going. And like I said earlier, I think it would just be very beneficial for everyone if uh, NXT goes to Tuesdays, AEW does Wednesday. It just makes my life easier. So I don't have to watch so much wrestling in one night. I could spread it out. I could watch Raw on Monday, NXT on Tuesday, Dynamite, on Wednesday, Impact on Thursday, SmackDown on Friday. I would prefer that. It's just it would be a lot easier to consume. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh no, overall, hey, listen, it's still a fun time wrestling. There's so much to take in. So uh on that note, Phil, let's go home and where can all the clicks just find you online? All right, heel Antoine H E E L A N T W I N E Twitter and Instagram uh, the Bulletcast on uh, Instagram, The Bulletcast YouTube, Bulletcast on Twitter, Complex Conversations, C O M P L E X X Conversations, the Instagram the, and the Twitter, and uh, the, the YouTubes as well. Chicle TV, C H I K L E TV on Instagram and YouTube. And uh, yeah, man, Huey, this has been fun. And as always, diamonds are forever. So is the microphone messiah. I'm coming back for my championship. It's my championship, buddy. <laughs> but I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey 83. For everything else, follow at In the Click on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram as well. Subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube. Thank you to all the clicksters for the continued support. Can't thank you enough. Please rate, comment, and share the podcast. And on that note, let's go home. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.